today we're going to talk about piezoelectric sensors and uh, how you design them sort of and how you measure them what's important to consider what are some basic equations so we remember earlier um, piezoelectric sensors they're based off the sensor part of the constitutive equation and essentially at this point we're not going to be applying an electric field unless we want to change the properties or something like that but uh, for simplicity's sake let's assume we have our you know our little piezoelectric material which we all know by now it looks like a block and it has some polarization and now we're applying some forces to it and because the dipole goes from negative to positive the positives are going down the negatives are going up easy way to remember it uh, this side becomes positive and this side becomes negative okay great so remember this equation uh, from earlier if you don't remember it then you probably didn't watch the other video but basically the piezoelectric d constant and the with the force applied in the three direction uh, related to the dielectric displacement in the three direction and we discovered that the dielectric displacement was equal to the charge Q over the area A. You'll notice at this point I'm very inconsistent with my description so uh, just follow along and listen. Okay so force over area and we'll, we'll look at that area cancels out and we knew this equation from before. A very elegant equation, right? Uh, okay, so then we can't, you know, most of the time we don't measure charge directly. We, most of the time on common equipment, we're measuring the voltage. So how do you get charge to voltage? Well, you know, this is a capacitor, so this equals CV. The capacitor in terms of voltage. Okay, so then we have the D, 3, 3, F, and that's all what we knew before. So the voltage equals, and I'm going to substitute with the capacitance, it's real fast here, and so don't get lost. Uh, so the capacitance is equal to the area, and I'm just going to shove the area right there. Uh, multiply by the thickness, and I'm just going to put the thickness right here, and by the relative permittivity, okay? in the three direction. So essentially now this 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 term becomes again uh, it becomes a uh, stress divided by the thickness multiply by this term right here and this term is actually another piezoelectric term and that term is to be called the piezoelectric G constant or the piezoelectric I think it's voltage constant uh, I can't remember the exact name uh, I think it's piezoelectric voltage constant so anyways, um, then that's also a 3-3, and there you go. So when we're looking at piezoelectric materials and for sensor applications, we don't look at the piezoelectric D constant alone, because we're caring about, we're caring about generating voltage, that basically the thing we're going to measure, we don't measure electric field, we measure voltage, we calculate electric field. So we're caring about this, we care about this D, G constant. So let's take a look at the values for a real piezoelectric materials. So I'm on one column, I'm going to write the materials, quartz, and we get barium titanate. It's different piezoelectric materials to get you. And these are two different types of uh, lead zirconate titanate. I think I mentioned that this was the most popular commercially available piezoelectric ceramic, 5H. And ceramics are hard versus PVDF the piezoelectric kind because there's also non piezoelectric polymer PVDF and piezoelectric polymer PVDF so get uh, if you're gonna buy one get the right one <laughs> uh, so here we go so in this column we're gonna write the different quantities so the piezoelectric D constant and we're gonna write this uh, E to the minus 12 and the piezoelectric G uh, voltage constant 10 to the minus 3 and we're gonna and you can figure out the units uh, I think the the units for the piezoelectric voltage constant are picocoulomb, or sorry, the yeah, uh, the charge constant picocoulombs per newton. This one is volts per volts meter per newton, and the permittivity over the relative the relative permittivity, and that's going to have no no uh, units. So we'll continue with describing these uh, quantities. And I mentioned that p uh, quartz is not a good piezoelectric actuator. And let's discover why. Because its value is only 
and barium titanate on the other hand is 190 and these are approximate values you do different com different slightly different material compositions you're going to get different values but gen this is a general kind of trend in PCT this type of PCT is a 289 uh, and this type of PCT very high 593 and this one PVDF which is a soft polymer 64 so you may be looking like hey I may want to use this one or maybe this one or maybe this one for my sensor application look at this big charge voltage charge constant but we don't measure charge usually we measure voltage usually so let's get into that but before this because we, I, I told you that the D over the epsilon O times epsilon X uh, this is the G constant so let's take a look at this part and we're probably going to guess what the outcome for the G is going to be uh, in the end anyway so this at course is actually 5 therefore it's piezoelectric you know could G constant is 57 around 57 So this is around 57. Barium titanate, on the other hand, has a 1700. Oh, looks like a good capacitor to me. Uh, but it's also okay piezoelectric material, and uh, that's 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 12.6 right there. And PZT4 has a 26.1, and this is 1300. And you know the, these these values will change depending on your supplier. But this is just for a general sense, 19.7, and PVDF, which is a unique material actually. Did I say that's 30? This is not 64, this is 33, and uh, it's permittivity 6, so it ends up being 380. So, or, sorry, yeah, so actually the best uh, material from a voltage constant perspective is PVDF. <coughs> That's why it's often used in, in, in these type of applications. But um, the limitation on this material is that it's soft. And we're going to get into why a soft material is not good. It's a polymer type of material. Uh, versus these are all hard, you know, calm, ceramics. Uh, and all, not all quartz. And you're not going to, when you go online and you buy fused quartz, don't just buy quartz as a piece of electric material. I don't even think it's available to, like, people wanting to do experiments and research pretty easily. I don't think it's the piezoelectric version of quartz and getting it a nice size and uh, I don't you know you're, you're gonna use these materials right here you're not gonna use quartz alright so now we realize that hey PVDF is pretty good from a G constant, D, G constant perspective which is what we should be thinking about now that we're in um, uh, this um, type of sensor application alright we'll continue in the next video